Good morning, Amador County. We are live with the Laureline and Ed show. Good. Merry Christmas, you all. I'm your hostess, Laureline Jackson, and sitting next to me is my darling husband, Ed. Say hello, hon. Hello. I don't know why I have to wear the ugly sweater. But it's so much fun. We are live in our basement in Buckcorn. Now, as you all know, we normally do our show at the Pioneer Park Community Center. But don't you know it? A freak storm has hit us, and we got snowed in. But thank goodness my niece CJ is a technical genius, and she got us all set up down here. Thank you, hon. Whatever. Now, before we get started, I want to give a big old thanks to the audience for being here tonight. Station over there is our cans of bug sprays for your convenience. And if, if you see a squirrel or raccoon, I got a baseball bat in the corner. Now, they're just trying to come in here to stay warm, but if you're squeamish, you may want to lift your feet up off the floor. That reminds me of a story. Here we go. Around five last night, I kept hearing the strangest of noises, and I could not figure out what in the world it was. It sounded like a wee, wee, wee. I told her it was probably an owl or raccoon. So I put on my boots, and I went outside, and in that tree was a raccoon. I told her. He looked like a tiny little bank robber. Bobby could be a couple guineas for a couple months now, and I just did not want that little robber scooping him up. So I went in and grabbed Ed's shotgun. I told her to leave him alone, but she doesn't listen to me. I went in and grabbed it, and I pointed at it, and I shot him. She missed. I did. I missed him. He was, I was only about seven feet away, and I missed him. So I shot him again. She missed again. I did. I missed him. He would look at me like I was the craziest thing in the world. So we climbed on down that tree. I let him go. He'll be back. Oh, I'm betting naughty, and I'll be waiting for him. That actually reminds me. Me and Ed just published our newest book. It's called... I shot him from my kitchen window. <laughs> Boy, there's some good eating in that one. Now that's our second cookbook. You be sure to pick up a copy of our first cookbook called I Found It on 88. <laughs> now, now that one has Mama Jackson sweet potato casserole, something we'll be making today in our cooking segment. Now you can find all these books down at Brenda's Bookshop. And bait shop located on Highway 26. You know, that also reminds me. You all know we've been, me and Ed have been married for a very long time now. 37 years. Oh, you go on. It's been 18 years. Anyways, people ask us, Lauren Lee and Ned, how do you do it? So we wrote our advice on marriage. It's called Shut Up Already. <laughs> Anyways, let's start the night off with a little bit of a witty chit-chat, starting what we did last night, like Kelly and Ron. But, hon, you know what I did last night. You're supposed to pretend I don't. That's the dumbest thing I ever heard. Ed Jackson, how long we've been doing this? Too long. Ed! About nine years. And in all those years, you still know how to learn the format? Hun, we do the same thing every night. They know we're married, and we eat dinner, we turn on... The wheel in CSI, and then you fiddle with your crossword puzzles, and I fall asleep in the Lazy Boy. Oh, fine then. Let's just look at what's going on around town. Oh, sure thing. I got the paper right here. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I had to use a shovel to find it. <laughs> oh, man, looks like one of our high school football teams isn't doing too well this year. Oh, that been wor bless their hearts. They've been working so hard. Let's see what else. Oh, man, looks like Roy's cows are mysteriously being shot at again. Oh, my, poor Roy. He's just been flabbergasted. I know who it is. Nuh-uh. Oh, yes, those Hackett boys just got new bows and arrows, and they own the property right next to Roy's. Ed, you cannot just go blaming those poor boys without any evidence. Oh, I know. Six arrows sticking out the backside of a cow? Don't lie. And I'm watching you, boys. Oh, look. Lonnie Brooks is getting married. Lonnie? The guy that talks to mailboxes? Yeah. Well, how about that? Boy, there's someone for everybody. I guess so. Now, before we get 
on with anything else. I also want to make an announcement. It's that time of year again to put on your Santa hats and go down to the Christmas delights in Jackson. It is so beautiful on Main Street. Yeah, it looks like Christmas threw up all over Main Street. It is so pretty. Well, we got some fun activities happening. My favorite, Miss Jingle Bells pageant. That's going to be uh, down at Sutter Creek's um, Auditorium and City Hall, which FYI also houses the police department. Now that's where Miss Jingle Bells 2018 Connie Chetham will relinquish her crown to the new Miss Jingle Bells 2019. Connie is such a beauty. Her mama owns the beauty box, so her hair is always looking perfect. Her hairdo is a sin, if you ask me. And she didn't win last year on account of her looks. Hey, Jackson, you hush up right now. What? If you ask me, Martha Lather should have won. But she didn't because of that incident involving the cigarette lighter and the UPS truck. Anyways, also to announce this Friday night, Santa will be riding his sleigh, giving out presents to all the good little boys and girls around town, and the festival will continue with the preserves and baking competition. Oh, that's right. My wife, Laura Lean's chocolate cake is to die for. When you bite into that rich, moist slice of heaven, you can't help but linger on its decadence. Why, if it were up to me, she'd win the blue ribbon for best cake in the whole world. Oh, Ed, you're so sweet. <laughs> we also have a couple other announcements from Mount Zion Church. Auditions for their Christmas play is going to happen tomorrow night. You know, hon, I think you should try out for those. You've always wanted to do the acting thing. Oh, I don't know. You really think I should, Ed? Yes, I do. They're going to have practice every night for two weeks. That'd be perfect for me. I mean, perfect for you. I mean, hon, I think that'd be perfect for you. Hey, Jackson, you trying to get rid of me? Yes. What? What? I love you. <laughs> Anyways, in other words, we also want to wish a very, very happy birthday to Isabel Trujillo. Trujillo? It's Trujillo. <laughs> Thank you, Spanish lessons are paying off. <laughs> anyway, she just turned 190. In big news, happy anniversary to Larry and Jane Leonard on their 91st wedding anniversary. I mean, 91 years, you don't Here. just get there by accident. Oh, their 16th wedding anniversary. <laughs> Sorry for that hiccup. 16 doesn't really matter. <laughs> It's not as big. Okay. Well, anyways, let's bring out our... Oh. Hey, you know the... Where are they having that thing at? Oh, you're right. I almost forgot. Right before I get to anything else, i like to mention that the Firefire Volunteer Party has been moved to the Pioneer Park. Yeah, because the firehouse burnt down. Ed, we weren't going to mention that. Carl already feels bad enough. Well, if he hadn't been trying to get rid of those dirt dauber nests with Roman candles. Okay, now let's move on. That's all the announcements we have for today. Let's bring out our first guest, fresh off their national tour. What, whoa, whoa, national? They haven't even been out of California yet. Ed, they have been to Minden, Nevada. Thus, national. Fresh off their national tour promoting their newest CD, This Duds For You. Please give a big round of applause for the Duds! Oh, God. Oh, okay. Yeah, the name Dud, it fits. <laughs> Head behave. I'll take that, too. We are so delighted to be here. We are so happy you girls can make out here in this blizzard. <laughs> Anytime you tell this one she's going to be on television, you better get out of her way. She almost mowed down Fred Mason in our 4x4. Four four. I honked. Oh, well, that is just wonderful. All right. Oh, hey there. You look so pretty. Uh, we got to cut to a commercial break, uh, but we'll be right back. Oh, I'll see what you're doing there. Uh-huh. We've only been doing this a billion years. What, darling? 
Nothing not, Laureline. Carla Jo, can you get the door, please? Ugh, do I have to do everything around here? And it's CJ. Oh, uh, well, hey, Ed, I've been meaning to ask you how you're doing. <laughs> Wait, what happened, Ed? Oh, nothing. It was an unfortunate incident involving a fishing waders and a garden hose. Well, it turns out water goes on the outside, and possums do too, for that matter. <laughs> I don't even want to know. Oh, hey, Bubba, come on in. Hey there, Bubba, how have you been? I'm good. You know, I turned my truck into a snow plow so people could get around for the festival, but my truck stalled just down the road. I was wondering if I can get a jump from you, Ed. Oh, sure thing, Bubba. Uh, hey, why don't you stay a while, Ed? Uh, we're doing our whole show down here because we couldn't get up to the community center. It snowed in. Oh, that's a wonderful idea. We can interview you about the road conditions out there. Well, I don't want to impose. Oh, you're not. You want a cup of coffee? Carla Jo, bring Bubba some coffee. She's going to bring you some coffee. Oh, that'd be great. Hey, Melinda, is that your brood out there in the front yard? Uh, why? Did they destroy something? No, they're just building a big old snowman. Oh, hey, yes, then they're all mine. That's nice. Dressed up in all costumes, looks like. Well, yeah, we're going to go to the church after this for a play rehearsal. Are all those yours? Yep, all nine of them. I got little Io, Sutter, Jackson, Martell, Volcano, Butthorn, Plymouth, and the Twins, River and Pines. Pines, huh? Oh, uh, we just love Amador County. Sometimes she's just a far short of a bushel. Here you go, Bubba. I put some sugar in it. Thanks, darling. You know, you were just knee-high to a grasshopper yesterday. My sister used to change your diapers when you were just a little thing. Hey, y'all, uh, I'll be right back. I gotta go radio into the police station about the road conditions out there. Are we on the air yet? Carla Jo, we on the air yet? Well, that little red light is on. Does that mean we're on the air? Oh, yes. Yes, it does. Ugh. I'm working with a bunch of idiots. We are back with the duds, and later we will be having a cooking segment and a makeover styling all the latest trends. Now, you girls just got off fresh off your tour? Uh, yes, we sure did, and we had a great time performing <clears throat> everywhere. And we got our new album out, This Duds For You. <laughs> oh, I just love it. It plays in my player nonstop. Yep. One time Ed just tried taking it out of the player, I almost took off his hand. And another time, he was hanging out the window like he was just going to throw it. <laughs> He's such a kidder. Why don't you girls tell us some of your songs that you got on there? Well, we have our hit song, Loving Me When Gravity Takes Over. And then, of course, like I said, the album title, This Does For You. And then we have a song that Belinda wrote all by herself. Oh, yes. And it's called, Their Feet Don't Stink If You Love Them. <laughs> I had a doozy of a time coming up with something that rhymes with antifungal. Oh, I just love that one. It's my favorite. You girls also wrote a book like me and Ed? Yep, we sure did. Uh, it's our own little diet regimen, mm -hmm. and it's called If It Tastes Good, Spit It Out. <laughs> oh, it just sounds wonderful. I guess you won't be able to have what we're making today because it's all kinds of good eating. We'll be making Mama sweet potato casserole in our cooking segment. We're off the air right now. The weatherman cut in with the weather bullet. Well, okay, I guess we'll just sit right here for now. Why don't you recite one of your poems for us? I'd rather not. Oh, come on. I love the one about unicorns and death. It's lovely. <laughs> oh, look here, Ed. It looks like we've been put together for the cooking segment. What? No, 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 no. She knows better than that. No, it says right here we are to dress and stuff a turkey. Well, you know what? That must be the tom that I saw outside, so you better go do the deed so we'll be ready. Fine. I'll get my shotgun. Shotgun? You can't shoot it, silly. We're going to be picking shots out forever. You need to wring its neck. Wring its neck? You see the size of that turkey? It's a turkey on steroids. Oh, go on with ya. Mrs. Jackson, can you please put the oven up to 350, please? No. And why not? 
I've got corn remover on and I'm watching my stories on the TV. Mama, you know that ain't true. I helped you remove that corn yesterday. They're stubborn. Ma Mama, get out of the lazy boy. You cannot add pounds before the holiday, especially since you've been saying that lazy boy all day long. I know you just didn't say that. Because let me tell you something, girl. You don't even know how hard labor is. I work in the cotton fields morning till night, dragging a hundred pound sack after. Mama, turn on the stove! Ed, will you tell your mom it wasn't too much to ask to turn on the stove? Eddie, are you down there, son? Do you hear the way she speaks to me? I have done nothing. Nothing is right. But try to be helpful by picking up, dusting, mopping those filthy floors, filling the bare pantry with healthy food for my grandchildren. Mama, turn on the oven! Well, fine. I see how where I stand in this household. Completely unappreciated. No home to really call my own. I just try to be quiet and... Has anyone seen Tom? Tom? Yeah, my turkey. I set up a pen out back, but he must have gotten out. He's a pretty smart little fellow. I rescued and raised him from a chick. He's, he's a real... He's hand-fed, loves to eat. Huge, really. I take him to the schools and hospitals to show him around to the children. He wears this cute little handkerchief. He can even count. He gobbles the answers. I thought maybe if there's time, Lurleen, I could bring him in and show him off. Well, that just sounds like a wonderful idea. But, um, only if we have time, which I really don't think there is. Oh, look, the lot's back on. CJ, the lot's back on. Good for you. Well, we are back, and we are in for a treat. Melinda and Ed are going to show us how to make the sweet potato casserole. Uh, actually, it says that we are to dress and stuff a turkey. Oh, no, dear. Your eyes must be as bad as Ed's. See, it says right here, Ed and Melinda, sweet potato casserole, dressed and stuffed with their turkey. See, right there, dear. Oh, okay. okay. Her eyes are really messed up. But I can tell you why her eyes are so bad. You let Tommy Buford practice on you again, didn't you, sis? Well, his confidence was just shot after that last experience. Still practicing with your vet technician? No, they kicked him out after he gave enemas to all the boarded animals. Why'd he do that? Because Marge told him to clean the poop out. She meant the cages. Boys, we really shouldn't be talking about this before the cooking segment. So anyways, he's studying online to be an optometry technician. Well, he does have that nice collection of eyeball, glass eyeballs. His house is all kinds of creepy. I mean, you walk in, there's eyeballs on the counters, on the nightstands, the dressers, in the bathroom, on the magazine rack. Boys, really think we shouldn't be talking about this right now? One time I opened up the freezer, he had eyeballs filling the ice trays. I had to squeeze one just to make sure it wasn't real. Ew! I asked him, I says, Tommy, what you got all them eyeballs in the ice trays for? Yeah, what'd he say? Says he likes to put them in his teeth. Says that they get real cold but won't melt like the ice. Huh. I know. So, Melinda, what was he practicing on you? Dilating. With those big old beefy hands of his, he couldn't put one drop in her eye. He squeezed half a bottle in my sister's left eye. Her depth perception was off. For about a week. Oh, no, it wasn't that bad. Sister, you took out half a block of mailboxes. Linda, that was you? <laughs> Only when I was going north. If y'all don't start the stupid cooking segment, we'll run out of time and my stomach is growling. Now, see there? Even CJ says we gotta get started. No, Melinda, why don't you and Ed get started on the cooking segment? Well, me and Belinda go over to give her a makeover. Excuse me? Yep, we're going to give you a face peel, going to do a little bit of eyeshadow, eyebrow maintenance, or a 
Lot of eyebrow maintenance. Girl, do you even touch those? Mm -hmm. uh -uh. There will be no maintaining of any part of me. No way. Nope. Why don't you use CJ or something? At least she's family. No way. Have you seen the way Aunt Lorelei dresses? Ugh. 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 <laughs> Come on, Belinda. It'll be fun. For who? You and everybody else out there in those pews? I don't think so. Come on. There's a lot of work to be done and super little time. Fine. All right, Ed, uh, let's get cracking. Looks like we got all the ingredients that we need right here. Yeah, here's the recipe. It, why don't you brush yourself off, because it looks like you're molting. And, uh, Bubba, will you make sure that Mama Jackson put the oven on? She always seems really taken with you. Sure thing, especially if I can have some of that casserole. <laughs> all right, so what we got here, we got, we need to crack three eggs. We need to beat them. We need to mash these taters. Uh, let's see. Well, which one do you want to do? I'll beat, I guess. Um, okay. Well, come on, Ed. This is going to be fun. Haven't you ever helped your mama in the kitchen? Um, maybe we could sing some Christmas carols for the audience. That would just depress them. Hey, Bubba, can you get me some more eggs? Uh, in a hurry. How are you doing there, Ed? Like, try using a lighter touch. You think? Here you go. Thanks, Bubba. Uh... Mrs. Jackson, did you mean a teaspoon or a tablespoon of ginger? It's a teaspoon of ginger and a teaspoon of cinnamon. Cinnamon? Ed, what you so angry at, son? I don't Just see a cinnamon gentle. in the recipe. Just a gentle whack. Of course there's cinnamon. Don't you think I know my own recipe? Uh, but I'm reading it right here in your handwriting. Put the cinnamon in the bowl. There you go, Ed. Nice and gentle, see? <laughs> okay, well, when it says zest of one medium orange, what do you consider medium? Uh, because what I see is large. Do I need to come down there? No! no! Follow the recipe as best you can, Melinda. Well, I'm trying, but her writing looks like chicken scratch. I heard that. Okay, well, now you need to... Now you need to put brown sugar and flour, and I'm going to chop these pecans right here. And, oh, my! How are you guys doing over there? <laughs> okay, then, let's do the butter, the eggs, the sugar, the flour, and let's put it all together. Can I go stick it in the oven? Uh, sure thing for, uh, for 35 minutes. Won't taste like mine. Oh, we know, Mama Jackson. You're the queen of casseroles. Everyone in town knows it, too. Carl Joe, can you get the door? I wonder who that could be. Well, Merry Christmas, everybody. Pass wow. it. Merry, Merry Chris, Christmas. Merry Christmas. It looks great in here. Uh, what's going on? Oh, we got snowed in, so we're doing our show da down here. Oh, well, I just came by to invite you to our Christmas service this weekend. I hope you're all going to come. Oh, absolutely. What is intended for this Christmas service? Well, if it's okay, I'd like to share a little bit of it. Oh, you go ahead. I gotta go check on Belinda and make sure her hair doesn't fry under the dryer. Well, that doesn't mean you get to miss church on Sunday then, okay? Oh, you know I won't. <laughs> Are you having a good time? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I just want to take a minute and just say Merry Christmas. And remember those times in Christmas that just seem to always stir us up. Always seem to bring back some good memories and sometimes not so good memories. I know for me, some of the best memorable times are the times when something went wrong. You know what I mean? There's things that just seem to stand out, but they ended up being so wonderful. I, I, I probably should have asked my wife permission before I share this, but I'm going to do it anyway because I've done that way for 25 years. I might as well continue. I remember one year... She wanted our girls. We had two beautiful daughters that were extremely sneaky. They knew how to find those presents. 
And so what we had to do one year, my wife came up with a great idea to put numbers on the presents instead of names, which was a great idea. They wake up Christmas morning, all they see is numbers. They don't know whose present is whose. So I turned to Deb and I said, well, let's get out the list. And she went, I can't find it. So the whole morning, it was like they would open that up, and I'm like, oh, I think that's Alicia's. No, that's Rebecca's. Oh, don't get, well, she likes that one. It, oh, we couldn't figure out whose present was who. And we laughed the whole time, and I still remember that. And I think many of us have those kind of memories that it just didn't go the way we planned. But looking back now, it was awesome. I think of Mary at this time of year when you think of the Christmas story. Not everything was going too well for her, well, for her fiancé as well, Joseph. Imagine the situation this young woman finds her in. This angel comes down, Gabriel, and says, hey, you're going to have a baby. And she goes, how can I have a baby? I haven't been with a man. What are you talking about? It must have shook her to the core. And then, then another angel goes to Joseph and says, hey, don't, don't worry about it. Don't put her away. It's going to be okay. And then they take this 90-mile journey to Bethlehem. 90 miles. I don't know, I've never been pregnant, but 90 miles on a donkey, pregnant. It doesn't seem to be going so well. And then to get there, only to find that Joseph forgot to use ye old Expedia, and he show up, and there's no room. I mean, I don't know how Mary must have felt. This guy. This guy was kind enough not to put her away. But at the same time, really? A donkey, not even a cart? Really? You couldn't make sure we had a place to stay? And I just think of how it must have shaken them to the core, that everything seemed to be going wrong. But then the baby Jesus is born. And it just seems to bring that peace about everything. I remember being so crazy about our first daughter being born, and now everything had to be perfect and everything we were worried about and how was my wife going to be. And it just seemed to, once we had her, everything kind of went, ah. And you know, that's what Jesus does to us. That, ah, everything's going to be okay. It may not seem like it now here. I think when we get to heaven, we're going to be looking back on a few times and laughing a little bit just like we're laughing in here. But when you go through it, it doesn't seem like that. And I love the name Jesus called the Prince of Peace. In a world today where everything is so divided, everything is so messed up from one end to another, oh, it's getting worse and worse and worse. You know what? In the center of the storm, there's this incredible peace that Jesus brings. And if that's you today, Today you've gone to church and went, eh, not into that. Or, you, or maybe you've thought about God, but you can't see him. Like, eh, I don't know. Maybe you have a little doubt. But maybe your life is also a roller coaster. You just seem to be going up and down, and there is no peace. I encourage you this Christmas season, first of all, make peace with those that you love. Take a moment. It's not worth it. It really isn't. Make peace with the ones you love. And make peace with yourself as well. Be okay. You know, we've been nervous about this for a long time. You know what? At one point, you just got to go, it is what it's going to be, and you have peace. And then make peace with God. That's why he came to earth, because we had a sin problem. Not everything was going too well for Adam and Eve either. I mean, frankly, Adam, being responsible man of the house, lets his wife wander off and eat some fruit. She was supposed to not do it. Then they get kicked out of the place. You know what? It just traveled through our nature until today. Now, you can remove that by just asking Jesus in your heart and saying, I want that peace. I want eternal salvation. The Bible, there is truth. There is absolute truth. I know that everybody wants to tell us their truth. I know we've seen a lot of it on TV and in our political system of everybody's interpretation of the truth. But Jesus is the truth. And I encourage you to search the Scriptures yourself. The Bible says, taste and see that it is good. Give it a taste. Come on, how frustrating is it for you when your kid won't try that asparagus? 
Just taste it. Just taste it. Don't spit it out. Taste it. And I think God does that with us too. Come on, taste it. I know you don't like every page. I know it doesn't make you happy on every spot. Taste it. Don't spit it out. Can I just say a quick little prayer and then we'll get back into this other crazy stuff? (laughs) Father, thank you so much for sending your son so that we are not left abandoned, left to our own devices. Instead, God, we've been given a Savior that no matter when things go crazy or things go wrong, you can bring peace into it. That God, no matter our condition from the original sin until now, you don't care where our feet have been, you just care where they're going. That there is no thing we can do that's too wrong to separate us from your love for us. So God, I pray for those this morning who pray just that simple prayer, dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart, forgive me of my sin, I give my whole life to you forever and ever. Amen. If you prayed that prayer and you'd like more information, just see one of our ushers or grab me or my wife or anybody and tell them, I don't know that much about it, but I'd sure like to find out. Okay? God bless you. Now that's going to be kind of what it's going to be like, Ed. Just a simple message of salvation. Well, thank you, Pastor. I hope to see you at church. We'll see. You're not going to wear that sweater, are you? I hope not. Well, come just as you are. (laughs) Merry Christmas. God bless you. Y'all ready to see the new and approved Melinda Dunn? Yes. Lord, I hate you right now. Here she is, the new and approved Melinda Dunn. Melinda, dear, come on out. What's going on? Well, Laureline's done worked her magic on Belinda. Belinda, if you don't come out here right now, I'm going to tell everybody what you were doing two Saturday nights ago. Oh, all right, sister. Jeez. (sighs) (laughs) Nice sweater. Of course, I always thought she was beautiful for that. And where did you get that sweater? This one. (laughs) Okay, already. Can we just get on with it? Sister, don't you got like 42 kids of yours that can put on a play for us or something? Get this attention off of me? That is a wonderful idea. CJ, can you go? I'm going. Well, that's about all the time we have for today. Oh, I see what you're doing. Join us next time when our guest, Miss Crawford from the Beauty Box, shows us the latest hair trend. And also, Ed will be showing us how to blow out a septic line. Hopefully, hopefully we'll be in our old studio. But you know, I kind of like it down here in the basement. Uh-uh. I can't hear my stories. And you people are all crazy! We love you too, Mama Jackson! Merry Merry Christmas!